skirt to show you how to create a high speed effect in Photoshop. Hey, what's going on YouTube? My name is Mo and I'm a car photographer from Bahrain. If it's your first time around this channel and you'd like to learn all about car photography and Photoshop, then go ahead and subscribe now so you don't miss out on all the cool stuff that I create every week. So if you've been following Peter McCannon, you must have seen his new video about creating high-speed effect in Photoshop. Now that's a great technique and I'll leave a video to, um, and I'll leave a link to his video in the description below or maybe somewhere around here. Now here's another way that you can add realistic motion blur to your images using Photoshop. And I know a lot of you have been asking me for an alternative to virtual rig. This is the alternative way. All right, let's jump in into Photoshop. All right, so now that we are in Photoshop, the first thing that I'm going to do is duplicate this layer, which is the background. I got this, by the way, from Shutterstock. You can find similar images on Shutterstock. So now that we have a duplicate of the original layer, I'm going to go to Filter, Blur Gallery, and then Path blur all right so now that we are in the path blur window um, let me just delete this the idea is very simple and it's all about paths creating a path to create a blur all right so let's just do this now here's a thought to this effect usually when you see a motion blur in a picture the things in the foreground appears to be in motion more than the ones at the back so keep that in mind across this tutorial now what I'm going to do is start creating paths. And I'm going to start from here. And the idea is to create balanced paths across the image to get that realistic speed blur, okay? I'm going to create the first line. You can see now we have a blur, but we need to lock it like so. And now I'm going to create another one just next to it, say about there. And I'm going just to continue this process across. So what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to balance the image. You can see that the blur here is not uniform and I'm trying to balance it out across the picture. So we might create just one more down here in between just to balance things out. And then I'll start doing this side like so. All right, so now that we've created all these path blurs, on the right hand side, you can control the speed of the entire blur. So let's say if I want to increase it, that's a bit too much, but that's, that's the effect that you're looking after, then you can keep it. To me, I like to just keep it very realistic. I think we're gonna keep it around 60, 65% for now, which is, I still think it's just too much. All right, so now remember when I first said, the things at the back should be less blurry than the things in the front, and that's what we're going to control right now. So what we're going to do is, I'm not sure there is a way, but we're going to select each one individually, and we are going to set the endpoint blur or endpoint speed. Now I'll keep it below 10, say around eight. Now you can do this manually to each by just coming down here and entering a value. So I'm going to do the same to all the path blurs available in this image. All right, so now I'm going to click on high quality and I'm gonna click okay. And it should render down the image. All right, so now that it's done rendering, you can notice the high quality of the blur down here. You can see that the objects in the foreground are really blurry and the objects at the back are less blurry. Now, if I were you, I would create a smart object on this layer. So, um, you know, I can go back and um, alter, let's say the values, let's say I wanted more effect or I wanted less of the effect, I can go back to that blur effect using smart objects. So if you think it requires more blur, you can now still go to filter and just blur gallery and it will start applying the effect. You see it's under progress. 
and there you go we've increased that effect now we've created even more of a motion blur now to complete this i would add a um curves to add contrast let's just select the default one i would say a linear contrast or a medium contrast and you can turn it down right here like so now i've used the same image here to create the audi rolling shot the only difference is I've used virtual rig to do the effect, while here I just did it in Photoshop, which is an alternative to virtual rig. All right, YouTube, so we've reached the end of this video. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. Please leave me a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you in the next video.